In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. We have come to know that eternal life is the one true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. Christ has been raised from the dead and appointed by God as Lord of life and ruler of all things, seen and unseen. So it's a great privilege for us to be here with Bob as he's baptized today. We who are baptized, who are spending this Lenten season to reflect on our own baptismal commitment so that we can renew that commitment at Easter time. So it's an honor and a privilege that you're here with us. So Bob, you would not ask for this life or seek baptism today unless you had already come to know Christ and wanted to become his disciple. And so I ask you, do you desire to be baptized? And I ask your godparents, which are your daughters, it's not too often that you get to be the godparent of your father, but we ask you, are you willing to accompany your dad and help him to follow Christ? Let us pray then. Father of mercies, we thank you for your servant, Bob. You have sought and summoned him in many ways, and he has turned to seek you. You have called him today, and he has answered in the presence of the church. Look favorably upon him, and let your loving purpose be fulfilled within him. We ask this through Christ our Lord. So let's be seated and listen to the word of God. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, are you unaware that we who are baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were indeed buried with him through baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live in newness of life. For if we have grown into union with him through a death like his, we shall also be united with him in the resurrection. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that our sinful body may be done away with and we might no longer be in slavery to sin. For a dead person has been absolved from sin. If then we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. We know that Christ, raised from the dead, dies no more. Death no longer has power over him. As to his death, he died to sin once for all. As to his life, he lives for God. Consequently, you too must think of yourselves as being dead to sin and alive for God in Christ Jesus. The word of the Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your kindness are from of old. In your kindness, remember me, because of your goodness, O Lord. Remember your mercies, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Remember your mercies, O Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Amen. 
Peter approached Jesus and asked him, Lord, if my brother or sister sins against me, how often must I forgive him? As many as seven times? Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but 77 times. That is why the kingdom of heaven may be likened to a king who decided to settle accounts with his servants. When he began the accounting, a debtor was brought before him who owed him a huge amount. Since he had no way of paying it back, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the servant fell down, did him homage, and said, Be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with compassion, the master of that servant let him go and forgave him the loan. When that servant had left, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a much smaller amount. He seized him and started to choke him, demanding, pay back what you owe. Falling to his knees, his fellow servant begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back but he refused. Instead, he had him put in prison until he paid back the debt. Now, when his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were deeply disturbed and went to their master and reported the whole affair. His master summoned him and said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you your entire debt because you begged me to. Should you not have had pity on your fellow servant? as I had pity on you? Then, in anger, his master handed him over to the torturers until he should pay back the whole debt. So will my heavenly Father do to you unless each of you forgives your brother or your sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. So we hear once again this message from Jesus of how forgiving we need to be. And it would be a mistake to think about what Jesus says and to think, okay, I'll do it. I'll grit my teeth and I'll forgive the people I have to forgive. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. It's not about gritting your teeth and begrudgingly forgiving people. It's first letting the mercy of God touch us, the overwhelming grace of God touch us. As St. Paul said in the first reading, you know, we have been immersed into the death of Jesus so that we might have life, life to the full. This is something that we don't earn, we don't deserve, but we're given as a pure gift. If we let that mercy touch us deeply if we let that love of God into our hearts then it's that love within us that enables us to be merciful to other people so it's great that we're celebrating a baptism today because it's a good reminder to us of the endless endless mercy of God that God is mercy within mercy within mercy. And we believe that this mercy is planted deep within us because we are the followers of Jesus. So let us allow that mercy to touch us once again. Let us pray for Bob and also allow Bob to be a witness to us that we who have been baptized are the recipients of this amazing mercy of God. So let us pray to the God of mercy for our brother who has asked for the gift of baptism. Let us pray for his godparents and for all of his family and friends. 
Father, increase Bob's faith in Christ, your Son and our Savior, we pray to the Lord. Grant his desire to have eternal life and enter the kingdom of heaven, we pray to the Lord. Fulfill his hope of knowing you, the creator of the world and the father of all, we pray to the Lord. Through baptism, forgive his sins and make him holy, we pray to the Lord. Grant him the salvation that Christ won by his death and resurrection, we pray to the Lord. In love, adopt him into your family, we pray to the Lord. Keep united in faith and love all who have been baptized into the one body of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Receive the prayers of our hearts. Receive the prayers of those who have asked us to pray for them. We remember Denise Rikurchi on her first anniversary of death. We pray for all those who are sick, those who are undergoing surgery, Maria Jansowitz. And the Mass today is offered for Tom Howard, that Tom and all the faithful departed may be welcomed into light, happiness, and peace in God's kingdom. We pray to the Lord. Father, look kindly upon the faith and longing of your servant, Bob, through this water by which you have chosen to give us birth from above. Join him to Christ's death and resurrection. Forgive all his sins. Adopt him as your own and count him among your holy people. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. And now we will ask God to bless this water to be a symbol of baptism. Praise to you, almighty God and Father, for you have created water to cleanse and to give life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, the Father's only Son, for you offered yourself on the cross that in the blood and water flowing from your side and through your death and resurrection, the church might be born. Praise to you, God the Holy Spirit, for you anointed Christ at his baptism in the waters of the Jordan, that we might all be baptized in you. Come to us, Lord, Father of all, and make holy this water which you have created, so that all who are baptized in it may be washed clean of sin and be born again to live as your children. Make this water holy, Lord, so that all who are baptized into Christ's death and resurrection by this water may become more perfectly like your Son. Lord, make, this, make holy this water which you have created so that all those whom you have chosen may be born again by the power of the Holy Spirit and may take their place among your holy people. Grant this through Christ our Lord. And so, Bob, because you desire to be baptized, I ask you to profess your faith in God, and I invite your family and your friends to join you in this profession. And so, I ask you, do you reject sin so as to live in the freedom of God's children? Do you reject the glamour of evil and refuse to be mastered by sin? Do you reject Satan, father of sin and prince of darkness? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary and was crucified, died and was buried, rose from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church. We are proud to profess it with you through Christ Jesus, our Lord. So now I invite you to come forward to the font with your godparents. Owl bearer. So do you want to be baptized Bob, Robert? Robert. Robert. Okay. Robert, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us welcome Robert. Sure you get his head too. Okay, you can go back to your place. usually give you this candle, but because you have oxygen, we're not going to hand it to you right now. <laughs> um, but the candle represents the light of Christ that is within you. May you continue to bear that light in your heart. And now we celebrate the sacrament of confirmation. We anoint you with the oil of chrism. That's a sign of your baptismal dignity. So Bob is born again in Christ and has become a member of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us, the Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. Let us pray. All-powerful Father, of our Lord Jesus Christ. By water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your son from sin and gave him new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon him to be his helper and guide. Give him the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence, Fill him with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I'm going to anoint your forehead. Robert, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit and may peace be with you. Amen. So now let us prepare our table of the Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and our lives may be acceptable to God, the loving Father. Open the door to your supper, O Lord, for those who approach the bread that is prepared and the wine that has been mixed, so that celebrating the heavenly banquet with gladness we may be numbered as fellow citizens of the saints and members of your household through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all who minister to your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them 
into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all together to everlasting life. For the reception of communion, I'll come around and bring communion to you. If you'd rather not receive, just put your arms over your chest and I'll pray a prayer of blessing instead.
And so, Bob, we anoint your head and the palms of your hands with the oil of the sick. It's a sign of your union with Jesus in your sickness, that Jesus is close to you and will accompany you. So through this holy anointing, may the Lord, in his love and mercy, help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. And may the Lord, who frees you from sin, save you and raise you up. Amen. Lord Jesus, you chose to share our human nature, to redeem all people and to heal the sick. Look with compassion upon your servant, Bob, whom we have anointed in your name with this holy oil for the healing of his body and spirit. Support him with your power, comfort him with your protection, and give him the strength to fight against evil. Since you have given him a share in your own passion, help him to find hope in suffering, for you are Lord forever and ever. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, we pray that nourished with the sacrament of your Son's body and blood, we may grow in the communion of his spirit and in love for one another. And so through ardent charity, reach the full stature of the body of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. O oh God, founder and ruler of your people, Drive away the sins that assail them, that they may always be pleasing to you and ever safe under your protection through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for being here with us. It's wonderful that we could be together. We'll continue to pray for you.